In today's video, we're going to be diving into the upcoming pattern and I feel like a broken record, but it is going to be overall warmer here as we look at the next few weeks here on the models. There is colder times, as we've mentioned before, there's going to be plenty of cold fronts moving through as we have a pretty active pattern with major storms moving across the nation pretty repetitively. Each one of them bringing a quick little cold front through that'll bring severe weather, uh, but also a day or two of cold in between the, the overall bigger picture, which is warmth. Uh, for days and days and days in between those cold fronts. So we're going to be taking a look at that. There still is some model guidance suggesting snowfall for the Mid-Atlantic, Ohio Valley, Great Lakes, Northeast. It's not going to be anything crazy, but there is snowfall popping up on the model, so we will see that today as well. Let's start out by taking a look here at the 6 to 10 day temperature forecast here from the National Weather Service. And we can see from March 31st to April 4th here is our time frame. I'm making this video a little bit earlier, so we haven't gotten the new ones out. This is actually from yesterday, but overall warmth expected throughout a lot of the plains, Rockies, Southeast regions of the United States. We do see cooler conditions across some of the Northern Great Lakes and Northeast here. This is because we do have a negative PNA in the West. That really just means cold temperatures out there, and that encourages the warmth in the east. But it is a weaker one, and that's why this warmth isn't stretching all the way to the north, and we are seeing some cold prevail up there. Let's go ahead and dive into the precipitation pattern during this same exact time frame, though. And as we take a look at it, again, March 31st through April 4th, we do see a very active pattern along the west where there is going to be repetitive storm systems moving on shore here. Uh, so well above average precipitation expected here. And we can see that this just kind of continues into the plains and into the east here. We're going to see st storms basically moving from west coast to east coast over and over and over again. So the only dry area you can really find is between New Mexico and Texas there. Pretty active, though, to say the least. Looking at the 8 to 14 day temperature outlook, things do get a little bit more extreme. We do see this negative PNA expanding a little bit. It's still marginal in the lower 48, but we do see very cold conditions for Alaska compared to normal. And that likely stretches in between the northwest and Alaska, which would be the west coast of Canada. So getting more intense with that negative PNA pattern. And this allows for the warmth to reach further and further northward. We see it in states like the upper Midwest, the kind of Great Lakes area, the northeast here, starting to get more of that warmth. But the warmth really, really builds here underneath for areas like the south central states, the Gulf states, the Ohio Valley, the mid-Atlantic, the southeast. These areas are going to be continuing to get warmer and warmer and warmer as we move into that first week of April. And maybe even as we head towards the second one, a little bit of a question mark there is that's obviously... The pretty long range, but that is what we're expecting as of now. Let's take a look at the precipitation during this time frame as well. And taking a look at it, you know, it's not too different. We do see pretty well above average conditions or above average precipitation, better yet, still along the west there. These storms probably still moving through in a similar way uh, up into the Great Lakes. Ohio Valley, Mid-Atlantic, Northeast here, all getting quite a bit of activity. A little bit drier along that West Coast and Southeast, but this is only the first shade, so it's not going to be crazy dry. Uh, we actually expect some near normal conditions to even above average conditions nearby this area. So I don't even know if this below average pocket is really necessary to put on the outlook if it was up to me. But we'll take a look at the models in a minute and show you what I'm talking about. Let's take a look at how the past 20 days have gone so far, just kind of like looking back. And this is the 6th through the 26th of March. Soon we're going to be looking at the 30-day period. And we'll get kind of an overview of how March has looked. But we've seen some cooler conditions along the west. Nothing crazy. It is very, very close to normal. But we have seen that negative PNA flex at times already through the month. And we do expect it to do so uh, as we head towards the end of the month. So I suspect we will end up with a colder west coast. And as a result, warmer conditions for the central and the eastern states here. Let's dive into the European model and see what that one has to say. And as we take a look here, we're going to move towards this evening where really things are relatively quiet. We do have some thunderstorms and severe weather expected for the Pacific Northwest, believe it or not, between Oregon and Washington where large hail is possible. Very unique situation today up there. So uh, really, really just interesting stuff. I'm super curious to see what ends up happening up there. But we will look at the Storm Prediction Center at the end of this video. So stay tuned for that, where we will see more in-depth uh, areas to expect severe weather and everything like that. But we see across the south-central states some thunderstorms flaring up as well. 
And overall, the jet stream, very interesting. We see a major trough in the east, major ridge in the west, pretty much the opposite of what we're expecting overall through the next few weeks. So again, there will be times like this in between the warmth, but there will be more of those warm days than cold days here in the east, and that's what really matters for the big picture outlook. Moving towards tomorrow, uh, we do have more kind of severe weather expected, especially here again from kind of like the Midwest down through Texas and Oklahoma, Kansas maybe as well. Nothing crazy, but there is some thunderstorms to even slight chances of severe weather down there. Not literally a slight risk on the categorical outlooks, but uh, just a, you know, more, I, I want to say marginal too. I think there is a marginal risk, but it's hard to use these descriptive words about the severe weather risk without kind of overlapping with the categories that the Storm Prediction Center has, but just a, a little chance of severe weather down there, I guess is a good way to put it. We do see more storminess for the Northwest continuing, and this is kind of transpiring as snowfall for a lot of the mountain ranges out there as it oftentimes does. Let's take this straight into Friday on the 28th of uh, March here and we do see that there is continued storminess in the northwest we looked at the outlook <laughs> the precipitation outlook at the beginning of this video so you know this is just expected to kind of just continue uh, we do see by Friday continued thunderstorm activity down here in the south central states even some thunderstorms maybe nearby this low here we're starting to get to the time of year where there's very very large areas of general thunderstorm risk where pop-up thunderstorms just can't be ruled out. We'll see that later on, like I mentioned, in the Storm Prediction Center outlooks. I want to keep this going, though, because we're right near our severe weather outbreak. And really, for me, I think it starts on Saturday. We don't have a long-range outlook for Saturday yet. Uh, I think we did originally, which is weird. But I see this being a really decent shot of at least very strong thunderstorms in this pocket for parts of the deeper south up into parts of the Midwest. Uh, but probably even a marginal or slight risk of severe weather, at least in there as well on Saturday the 29th. We do see showery activity up to the north for areas like the upper Midwest and Great Lakes, and even snowfall as you move closer to that Canadian border or closer to the Rockies there. Um, really, really interesting storm. By the time we reach Sunday, this is when uh, things start to get a lot worse, and we can see our low is near Michigan here. Uh, we have a trough here just to the east of the Rockies and then a strong ridge in the east here. So that's creating a nice little warm sector. We do have this dragging cold front though. So we're going to be watching areas. It's a pretty big area, but this whole pocket here for severe weather on Sunday, which might be a pretty major severe weather day. Uh, obviously, at least a slight risk that's already on the long range outlet outlooks, but enhanced risk or even higher can't be ruled out. So it could be a very active day. I do think that there's a chance of thunderstorms out ahead of everything because our day two out or not day two, but the, the second day of this event or really third at this point for Monday is going to feature severe weather in here. But already by Sunday night, we do have thunderstorms present in that area as well, according to this model. And as we head towards Monday, again, the final day of this severe weather event, this low ends up near the Adirondack Mountains. We end up seeing thunderstorms and severe weather underneath that with that cold front where at least a slight risk will be pretty large throughout the southeast regions of the United States and even stretch up into the mid-Atlantic, uh, but we could even see an enhanced there or higher. Now, as we take a look at the west, we continue to see uh, the storminess move in, and we see more snowfall, I would say, by this point than at any point so far in the model run. So for the Sierra Nevada, Cascades, Rockies, we are seeing a lot of heavy snowfall out there as that's just going to continue to pile up, obviously. Tuesday, that storm has completely moved through. We get a little bit colder in the east. Again, it's one of those colder time frames after that cold front moves through. We almost instantly have another storm to talk about, though, for Wednesday on the 2nd, which would probably feature severe weather underneath itself again. This one also seems to pose more of a snowfall risk for areas like the Rockies, Northern Plains, up Midwest, into the Great Lakes. So a pretty impactful system. And once again, we're dealing with a western trough eastern ridge here creating this warm sector for these thunderstorms to really really pop off here again wednesday the second is a time frame i'm watching and even as we move towards thursday on the third of april we continue to see a thunderstorm and severe weather risk here along this cold front your lows up in michigan kind of following the exact track of that storm before it uh, and it even ends up near near the adirondack somewhere in this area that low ends up which is very reminiscent of where that other one was we have thunderstorms underneath for the southeast regions. 
but that low has weakened so probably the dynamics won't be quite as strong but this would at least present itself as a thunderstorm risk if not a little bit of severe weather in there uh to say the least that's that's like at least because things could definitely change we are close to 10 days here so this could become a little bit worse looking over time but time will tell of course continue to snowfall in the northwest as we move towards the day on friday we do see a secondary low start to pop up there offshore of the mid-atlantic and this probably would help enhance some of these thunderstorms down here wouldn't be surprised if there's another uh very similar uh risk of severe weather to what we're seeing on this upcoming Monday for the Southeast. So like a pretty large slight risk maybe. Uh, but I could see it being a little bit less than that or a little bit more. Again, time will tell. The further we go out, the, the more uncertain it becomes, obviously. Snowfall expanding out in the Northwest as well by that time frame. By Saturday, there's still some um, thunderstorms in the Southeast, snow in the West. Right around Monday the 7th is when we get our next storm system. It's 1,005 over Kansas. We get a Rocky Mountain snowstorm even into the northern plains there. And another pretty substantial severe weather risk for Texas, Oklahoma, Missouri, Arkansas, Louisiana. Again, this model is showing it on April 7th. This is well beyond uh, 10 days, so take it with a grain of salt. But these models have been continuously showing uh, storm after storm after storm. And the same trough in the west, warm sector in the east that just creates a really, really bad dynamic for potential severe weather to occur. So this would be storm, I think, number three, or severe weather event number three at the very least. And by Tuesday, that continues. I mean, this is textbook stuff. 996 over Missouri. Clear high precipitation warm front there. High precipitation cold front. We would be watching primarily this area here for severe weather. So Arkansas, Mississippi, Louisiana, East Texas, Eastern Oklahoma, into Western Tennessee. Really, really classic, like I mentioned. Continued snowfall from this one over the plains, mostly like the western plains. So we're talking eastern Wyoming, eastern Colorado, and then western Kansas, western Nebraska. But once again, you want to take this with a grain of salt. This is very, very far out. Uh, we do see those thunderstorms eventually reach the southeast, the same way the other storms basically went. And then it's all done. The, models, the model runs over at this point. So this is right around uh, 9th, 10th of April time frame. The GFS model, we're going to get some agreement. Uh, first off with your first system, really, really good agreement. But as we move towards Tuesday, April 1st, look at this. West Virginia, Ohio, Kentucky, Pennsylvania, New York, all seeing some light to moderate snowfall. Again, nothing crazy, crazy. This could get worse. If this was the real solution that we end up seeing, this could be a whole lot worse. Um, but definitely some snow in that area. We instantly rebound and get storm number two here right around the second, third. Again, severe weather to the south, snowfall to the north. And then we get another system moving through uh, as well as another. So we get four on this one. So right around the ninth, tenth, we get another storm developing. And that one starts to move its way eastward. So either case, three or four uh, pretty substantial storms with a good risk of severe weather. Really, really not what you want to see in early April um, on both models. So great agreement. And basically the dynamics look great on both models for all of those systems. So we could be in for a very, very active uh, portion of the severe weather season, as we've already seen throughout a lot of March. So just a really, really, really intense start to the severe weather season. As far as the precipitation, I mean, the east is actually just exploding with precipitation. We're seeing a continued increase in the amount of precipitation expected here. Uh, the northwest continues to look pretty good, but they were looking a lot better as far as precipitation before. Looking at the anomalies, we do see some below, some above here. It just depends on your averages, but decent amounts. But all of these areas, look at this. We are inches above average as far as precipitation over the next two to three weeks. Just crazy, crazy stuff here. Looking at the total snowfall on the European model, we see just an explosion across the Rockies into parts of the plains. Most of that coming in the long range. So you saw that major storm at the end with heavy, heavy snowfall in this area. So you definitely want to take this with a grain of salt, especially if you're not in the Rocky Mountains and you're more in those plains areas. But it's definitely something to pay attention to. So basically, the plains and Midwest do phenomenal into the Great Lakes. Mid-Atlantic and Northeast, there is some snow to talk about, even on the European model here. Pretty interesting. But the GFS model uh, shows a little bit more consistent snowfall for the Ohio Valley, Mid-Atlantic, and Northeast there. Let's finally take a look at the Storm Prediction Center outlooks again. Today, we do have 
a few areas of general thunderstorm risks, uh, like the lighter green areas here across the map. That's going to be your general thunderstorm risk areas where we expect general thunderstorms, as the name kind of suggests. No severe weather is necessarily expected, but these outlooks are very, very hard uh, to predict, especially with severe weather. It's just, you know, you never know what's going to pop up if dynamics get a little bit more favorable than expected. So please heed every watch, warning, and advisory still. We do have two marginal risk areas, one there for Washington, Oregon, and Idaho, and then one down there for Southern Texas. That is the darker green areas where we expect isolated severe weather reports to come in. And then again, right between Washington and Oregon, we do have that level two slight risk where we expect more scattered about severe weather reports. And mostly in this case, we expect hail, maybe even fairly large hail in that area, which is just super unique. Taking a look at day two, which will be for Thursday on the 27th tomorrow from the time I'm making this video, I guess there is really a slight risk down there, but we have two very large general thunderstorm risk areas. Again, this time of year, we're getting more and more favorable for thunderstorms. So we're seeing just many different states included in these big general thunderstorm risk areas where they could just kind of pop up anywhere. Uh, but the two areas to watch are going to be here over the Midwest, uh, where we have, again, a marginal risk, level one. And then for uh, New Mexico and Texas, we also have a level one marginal risk. And then we do have that slight risk showing up again for South Texas. Moving towards day three, very large general thunderstorm risk area again, and then two marginal risk regions there in the darker greens. Looking at the extended outlooks, day five on Sunday, again, there's nothing for Saturday, but there probably will be severe weather in there somewhere. Uh, Sunday does look a whole lot worse on the 30th for states like Texas, Louisiana, eastern Oklahoma, Arkansas, Missouri, Illinois, Indiana, Ohio, Kentucky, Tennessee, Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia, North Carolina, Virginia, West Virginia here. So many different states included in this. And the yellow translates roughly to a level two slight risk. So we are seeing a pretty elevated chance for a large area. And it's easy to assume that there would probably be an enhanced risk at least somewhere in there once we get to Sunday, uh, if not even higher. So this could get pretty bad. And it's going to basically be the same thing for day six, except we're looking from Louisiana, kind of like the deep south up into the southeast and even the lower mid-Atlantic here. Again, at least a slight risk is expected in these yellow areas. And with it being this large, you expect usually to see uh, an enhanced risk or more in there somewhere. It's not guaranteed. I have seen very large slight risks, but uh, it's definitely more likely than not typically in these situations that you see a little bit more than a slight risk. It definitely depends on how it pans out. And again, this is for Monday on the 31st, uh, just a few days from now. Well, I guess that's kind of an overstatement, five days from now. With all that being said, we upload every single day, so be sure to subscribe. You can even hit the bell icon for daily notifications when we upload, so you never miss one. Be sure to like the video if you did enjoy it. Leave a comment down below, and I'll see you guys in the next video.